What's good, YouTube? It's from your boy Squiddy back in another Squiddio, and we are here with a very special guest today. This is amazing. Look at this. This is crazy. <laughs> tell me, well, tell us a little bit. Well, introduce yourself, I guess, first and foremost, and tell us a little bit about what the heck happened to your tournament experience because this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, so hi, I'm Forbes. Uh, you guys know me as the sous chef guy. This is the second time I'm doing this. Um, it blew up way more than I thought it would. But uh, my tournament experience was X5. Wow. Now, I didn't really come here to win. My whole my whole mindset whenever I do this was literally um, at the start of the tournament, right before everyone starts doing all the meta, the mirror matches, have some fun with it, get your groove on. You're the end, having a bad day, you got shifted all day, you got debared all day. Have some fun, relax, rewind, like unwind, play against something absolutely stupid, and have some fun with it. So, so you literally cool. brought sushi yes. <laughs> on this sushi board as yes. a sushi chef. You cooked something up intense, and this man literally went viral on Twitter. He's, we've got like 25k likes because everyone wants to see what he's cooking. And honestly, yeah, we can't disappoint the people any further. We literally have to have this recipe. So right. without further ado, I guess let's see what the ingredients are. So for those of you on the tweet who said you would <laughs> if I wasn't playing sous chef, don't worry, I am playing sous chef. It is not pure though. Um, I couldn't get pure to work without it being nine out of 10 times bricking. So um, we got some special ingredients, some so, spicy. So main deck, three shari, three shari red, three uni, and then only one Ikura, and I'm not running any Shirawa. Um, some sushi players would not be very happy with this, but in in a vacuum situation when I tested this, seeing this or Shirawa in hand usually does not advance my game set at all, so I just, just decided to run one for this and for the Xyz. But these three basically are all you really need to get your engine going to do what you're trying to do, which is the OTK. And so then for, oh, sorry. These are the only ones we have on the menu, and Basically, I guess to explain to the viewers, we have a vanilla one, and then this one's like, is it like Exo Sister Martha? I think it's that similar to Martha in the sense that you would. So the downside is, unlike Martha, you need two cards in hand. Okay. But the payoff is, once it is resolving, you cannot respond any longer. Wow. It is all one effect. So to do so, what would happen would be you reveal this and Shari. It has to be another Shari. This counts as Shari. So it could be two of this or this and this. Gotcha. So if your opponent does not interact with you at that point, the moment it summons and you choose to summon another one, there's no more window to respond because it will then immediately overlay. Wow. So it is all one is all one line. So you have to get both sushis or none. Yes, which is Konami. Please give me a one card starter with this deck. It's <laughs> not. It's not crazy. I just want to be funny and be a bit more consistent. <laughs> um, again, I'm not playing it pure because I couldn't get it to work pure. So engine number two, another 10 card package is um, Adventure. I have two Water Enchantress, one Griffin Rider, the one Fateful, the one Graco back, almost forgot the name, and then three Rite of Aramis here. Uh, two of this because you don't want to get drolled. Three of this because you just kind of want to see it. Um, one of the rest because it's you've run more, you kind of just end up breaking on them. I did play with the idea of bumping this one up to two for a very specific tech card for the format, but decided against it, ran something else instead. The weirdest part of the, the deck, honestly, and the thing that paid off the most in this event. So, little side note every game I played went to game three. Shout wow. out to everyone I played against, it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun. Those of you who said it was your big major event, I hope you guys keep coming back. So it's the three revolution synchron. Really? This synchron? card saved my life <laughs> in smokes. a lot of these fights. Is literally the reason why it ended up going to game three so many times because concerned this deck prefers to go blind second, red letting me go into black black rose or black rose moonlight to like break a board or force the gates out early does so much. And then afterwards I can go into crystal wing, I can go into Draco Berserker. I can also go into Barone, which is really funny and my opponents usually don't expect it. But it's the card, I don't know why it was printed. It's glow up bulb, but with like a shot of adrenaline in it. That is nuts. Adventure Revolution Sushi. <laughs> yeah, so um, the two main like combo lines you would start would be 
Rev plus Aramis here gets you to at least 7,000 damage on board. Wow. And then the Zeus ship line is just Zeus ship stuff. You, you hit them directly, you make Zeus, or you negate their board, hit them directly, make Zeus, that kind of thing. That's crazy. So you're force feeding your opponent's sushi. I will feed you rice. You are going on a culinary adventure and you don't really have a choice about it. <laughs> Unless you open Secret Village, I kind of stare at your board and go sad. <laughs> Spellcasters don't like sushi. The, the next two cards um, are the reason why I decided not to bump this up to two. I ran two Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir is just insanely good. It baits out like almost every hand trap on the planet because everyone doesn't like this card when it hits the board and it just being on the board is very... Uh, it applies pressure in ways that a lot of players at this point are very familiar with because cash has been around for almost a year and a half now. Has it been that long? That's been kicking around for way too long. But yeah, so this just being there, usually people assume you're either playing Cash or Manadium or some variation of Visa's deck. So they'll usually Ash this, and from there, the rest of your combo usually goes off without too much of a hitch. The downside is if they droll you after this, you kind of sit there and just stare at your board because you can't add anything else for the rest of the turn. Okay, for Board Breakers, I have two Dogaran, one Gamma Seal. Used to run Lava Golem, got yelled at by my friend, and I'm now not running Lava Golem. <laughs> Absolutely great board breakers. Very underrated in this format, just kaijus in general. Uh, absolute necessity to run with cards like Chaos Angel kicking around. Because also, um, Purely Nor gets rid of it. It's not protected. Wow. So, downside is it still triggers Mirror Jade, but it does get it off the board, so you don't have to worry about your stuff getting banished, and you can try to push to kill them that turn. Also, hard drawing two isn't really a brick, because you can just summon the other one to your board. Now you have an extra body. I'm trying to internalize all this. We have so many cool engines, so many ingredients. We have Adventure, Revolution, Cash Tira, Kaiju, and One Sushi. Kurikara. And Kurikara. <laughs> um, the main reason she's there, she's a small world bridge. So the fun thing with this deck is everything can bridge into each other. Kurikara is the best bridge in the deck, being a level one, being a fire, and also not sharing a type with anything else. Wow. Uh, the Kaijus also, also all work as small world bridges. The only thing that's not really that good of a bridge is Fenrir, but you can... This is the weirdest line I've had to do one time. It was uh, Drake, it was a uh, Griffin Rider and a Fender in a Revolution. It was terrible. <laughs> I definitely could have done something else, but it worked out in the end. Um, hand trap slash interruptions. Three Book of Moons. Three Ash Blossom. Three Imperm. Tactics is everywhere. Imperm is kind of a necessity in this format. Book of Moon, just solid card, and Ash just kind of. It, Ash is just a good all-around hand trap. Still ups a lot of things. It usually doesn't end a turn nowadays, but it is enough to slow them down and cause them to play suboptimally, which is really good for this deck when you're trying to just make their board as small as possible so you can kill them the next turn. And then Book of Moon, not already explained. Two Small World. Again, everything can Small World into each other in this deck. It's why this card is good. I'm not running three because I got tired of seeing two in my opening hand and not being able to do anything with it. I still saw two in my opening hand and couldn't do anything with it, so... <laughs> Please. <laughs> two thrusts, two tactics. Um, power spells are really good this format. Tactics lets you break boards, lets you draw cards, gives you information. Thrust is just insane. I don't know really why they printed it, but... Thank you, I guess, Konami, for making the game more complicated. And then one Harpy, and then one Herald the Abyss. I'm not citing these because I am going second. I do have to be able to pivot into any board I see. So having one Harpies, one Herald lets me get into them with the rest if I have to. So that is the main deck. Amazing. Wow, there's so many ingredients. I'm trying to internalize it. This is actually like a competitive Sioux ship deck. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's competitive. I have gone to game three, but I would not say it's competitive. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like they don't expect what the heck I'm doing, so they don't know what to do about it. I have a question. What were the reactions of your opponent when they saw the initial sous ship card? I guess they assumed from... They, um, so, again, my whole goal coming to this event was for my opponents to have a good time. Mm -hmm. They, the moment they see me sit down, they go, yo! <laughs> and that was the best reaction I could get. That's all I can hope for, is that my opponent just leaves the game with a smile on their face. So, it's great. The last, the last rounds were my best games because my opponents at that point just didn't care. We're just doing the dumbest thing on the planet. I got, um, what is that theater Despia card? A Perskinian. I got Perskinian for game. And that was the funniest thing that's happened to me all day. Wow. And that was immediately after I black rose the whole board so it was empty. <laughs> so it was like, this is amazing. I love funny stuff. So that's the greatest way to go out for me. Incredible.
I'm excited to see more. See the side deck yeah, let me and the spice things. in the extra deck. What oh, the extra more deck is ingredients gonna, do we have? Some sushi players are going to yell at me for the extra deck, but <laughs> oh boy. So many yummy ingredients. Guys, this is absolutely spectacular. If you're watching this at home, literally, if you guys have a favorite deck that you want to do, definitely bring out a cosplay, whip out the entire bundle. You can see this man even has a bento box for his deck box. That's wasabi dice. Wasabi dice too? Holy smokes. <laughs> This is incredible. Wow. I actually had um, food sleeves, but I was I was I was worried that they would tell me to resleeve my deck again, so I just said ah, I'm just gonna sleeve them in like normal clears and hope mm -hmm. that they don't tell me to resleeve my extra deck, which is also in two ship sleeves. Amazing. I didn't even know they had sushi sleeves. They're not official. So actually it was hard for me to find these. I saw someone with these. I asked them where they got them. It turns out they were, I think they were Kamaket sleeves. Okay. And I ended up having to go on Yahoo auctions. Wow. And ended up paying like 70 bucks for these. But I was wow. like, I will take the hit. I already spent a lot on the rest of the getup. <laughs> Might as well go the rest of the way. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we're going to go the extra deck and then the side deck. So again, sushi players don't hate me, but this was my best way of making the deck work in this format. So two uni, this is the bread and butter of the deck, the main sous ship himself, and probably the best sous ship out there. Its effect when you summon it with the correct ingredients will draw you a card and also let you attack directly permanently. Wow. attack directly. The crazier part about this card, um, and people who don't know about this, I will clarify, I did head, ask the head judge about this, I've asked multiple head judges about this. It's second effect, so once, once per turn, soft once per turn, you can negate the effects of card, currently face up cards permanently equal to the number of sushi exceeds you have hmm. not with original names just sushi exceeds and the thing is in a chain you can negate cards that are in the chain that have not resolved yet because they are still currently face up so for example say my opponent chooses to imperm this i can immediately chain this to negate that imperm oh and it's the downside is it's only during my main and my opponent's battle phase but it'd be kind of insane if it wasn't. <laughs> be an Omni negate. Yeah. But the fun thing with this is the deck can't be evenly matched, which is fantastic. The other fun thing with this is because it's a soft once, if I control two, I can negate a total of four cards permanently on the board. Amazing. Because it is all soft and doesn't require unique names. It just wow. says Sushi exceeds monsters. Wow. So it's this card is actually really good just slightly hindered but i can kind kind of understand why it's hindered but at the same time i'm playing sushi <laughs> let me have something broken <laughs> like the one broken thing that'd be great pretty yummy um the other sushi exceeds is the one akura i'm only running one of this and i cut down on the akura because i realized this card's main purpose is to help push for game it also helps out floodgates so it's a fact if it's made correctly draw a card with it's made with shari and it's made with akura it can attack twice so that's 44 damage, 4400. And then its other effect that it innately has is if any Sushi XC steals battle damage, you can pop one card on the field, which is also a soft once per turn. So if you set up multiple of these, like Uni, like you have one Uni and then three of these, one direct attack from Uni, you pop three cards on the board, which is strong, but in this version isn't enough. So I ended up just cutting it down to one. Um, the honorary Sushi, honorary Purely, and honorary Melfi, uh, two copies of Zeus. Um, don't know why the card's at three, but it's really good in this deck because you very easily go into a format Zeus with Uni because you just put a Thunder Charger on top of it. Wow. Zeus is for dessert. Zeus is for dessert. You get a giant mecha after you eat your rice. Um, <laughs> absolutely bonkers card. Very strange that it's at three, but we're getting Typhon soon and I'm slotting that in here too, so... <laughs> The next part, and this is the main thing I know Sushi players will really be confused with, I run Synchros in this deck, so I don't instantly die to D-Barrier. <laughs> and D-Barrier is kicking around a lot, so I run one Barone, one Draco Berserker. I'm probably going to cut this, this did not come up at all this weekend. Um, the one Crystal Wing came up a lot. One Shooting Riser, shout out to one of my friends for telling me to play this. Uh, this card, lets, because of its level modulation, lets you do some very funny lines in this deck, and I can explain that in a bit. One Black Rose Moonlight and one Black Rose, and then the one high speed Roy Chandra, which uh, people didn't understand why I ran it until I made it and hit them in the face for 46. Um, Chandra sort of replaces the purpose of Ikura because this swings twice as well, but it gets bigger each time it swings. 
Shooting Riser can drop its level in this version from to six, four, or three, which lets me go to Black Rose or Baron during my opponent's turn. And Moonlight is a little slept on. It's not the best card you could go into, but the fact that it bounces any level five or higher that's special summoned, and then afterwards, once per turn, if they summon something that's level five or higher, you bounce anything you want is really good. It's also another way to make sure that your opponent's resources get spent on something that they wanted out. And then it turns out they're not able to because you just sent it back and now they're, they're down two cards, down three cards. So, helps a lot. Also, help out Mirror Jade because Mirror Jade, when put back to the deck, does not resolve its ball. It's nuke. As far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure that's how it's been ruled every time. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, and then the, the last card is a bit of a tech card I ran. People don't run this card very often. But in this format, outside of very certain cards, certain builds, they can't. A lot of decks can't actually get rid of it. Is a BLS Soldier of Chaos. This card is the reason why I considered bumping Griffin Rider up to three, and the end reason why I ended up running two more Fenrir. Uh, Soldier of Chaos, when made with level seven or higher, cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you don't out it fast enough, it just gets big enough to swing and just kill you in one turn. And it's the usual thing I sit on against Lab, because Lab has to go into Underworld Goddess, which is like a huge resource commitment. Or they make it, or they somehow make an extra deck monster that's a warrior and IDP it, which hasn't happened to me yet, but could happen. It's pretty good into Unchained, and overall the card is very solid in this format. I feel like people don't play it enough. And then the last card is just this, because I don't like Ibli. And it's one of those things where I feel like if I don't have it, I will see Ibli, and if I do have it, I won't. So it's kind of like just a lucky charm. <laughs> but I'll probably end up cutting these in the future because these two didn't really come up. Amazing. And that is the extra deck. Side deck is pretty standard, honestly. It's just, it's the three nib, three shifter. Don't like that I have to side this, but this card is, came up so often in the format that it's like kind of needs to be there, but I actually never ended up siding it in because everyone I played against, their decks didn't actually lose to it because I'm pretty sure everyone's at this point pretty prepared for it. Uh, two XC's Encore, mostly because of Purely. I don't like my opponent drawing cards because if they draw cards, they see Hand Trust, and if they see Hand Trust, my turn ends. Uh, <laughs> three Cosmic Cyclone, Bathroom decks are my worst enemy, and three, and then one of the cards that should be banned, three D Barrier, one Trap Trap. Um, Pulled this out twice. Didn't like that I had to, but I did. So, very standard side deck, I feel like. It covers most of the deck's bases. If I would change anything in hindsight, would be to run one of this Dweller in the extra deck because I didn't realize that stopped unchained until after I submitted my deck list. Wow. And that's pretty much it. This is an incredible deck list. Everything's so amazing. The cosplay is amazing. And this mat, as well as hand carved, it's amazing. It's um, so I actually commissioned this guy to make it for me. Wow. It is falling apart a little bit, but it has, that's kind of my fault because I left it in my car for like three months. Mm. So, but overall, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Forbes. Do you have any quick shout outs you want to give? Yeah, so um, shout outs to my friends over at Team People Rebo. Uh, it's not our official team, it's sort of just our group sort of YouTube channel. We upload just vlogs and occasional podcasts and us kind of just crapping on each other for the fun of it. We upload deck lists of our friends and we go to like regionals and we do well. We just kind of have some fun with it. Um, shout outs to Nate. Nate Shimada for yelling at me and saying my deck build was trash and like fixing it for me at 4 a.m. Uh, shout out to Toby. Another member of our group who told me to run Adventure. And uh, shout out to Michael for telling me to run Shooting Riser because that came out a lot. So shout out to my shout out to the boys. Um, shout out to the local store by my house, Card Art, for letting us test and do things around. So thank you all for being there. Oh, and shout out to everyone I played against and to everyone who played this event who stopped by to say hi. If you are new to the game, I hope you guys keep playing. If it's your first big event, I hope you guys come back. Um, I hope I made you guys' day a little more fun. I hope everyone had fun when they saw me. If it did, I've won in my heart, and that's all that really matters to me. So thank you guys for being there. Thank you guys for saying hi. And I hope you guys keep playing the game and enjoying it. Amazing, Forbes. So well, thank you so, so much for this profile, and we hope to see you at the following YCSs. See you guys.